To close Little Blue Run, it's going to take, I believe, 15 years to get the closure completed. And I think, you know, it's going to be somebody's concern for a long time. Coal ash elements are going to outlast the pond. And so we have a, a toxic legacy issue here that's going to be with us until we can figure out how to box this stuff up and keep it out of contact with the environment. So everything around us, these are all coal refuse. Right, this is all coal refuse. Is it safe to have it just kind of hanging around out here, out in the open? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. One of the few success stories in the fight against coal ash has been the closure of Little Blue Run, a coal ash pond so big it can be seen from space. Behind me is Little Blue Run, which is the largest coal ash impoundment in the U.S., poorly disguised as a lake with this unnatural blue color. It spans over two states and contains 20 billion gallons of coal ash. Little Blue was built in the 1970s, and over the years has leached large amounts of arsenic and selenium into the nearby communities. When the residents discovered the chemicals seeping onto their property, they notified the state that they were going to sue First Energy Power if the problem wasn't fixed. The Environmental Integrity Project went to the federal government and said, you know, we want something done about this or we're going to sue the federal government. So the federal government, I guess, went to our state DEP and told them they better get their act together and make, it, make them close it down. Just 59 days later, the federal court ordered First Energy to close the pond and begin the long process to clean up the site. Sandy Wright has advocated for the closure of Little Blue ever since it failed to live up to the energy company's promises. They showed us this beautiful lake that looked like a nice state park. It had a motorboat on it with a girl on water skis. It had, um, you know, somebody fishing in a cove, and it just looked like a great place. They explained that we would have almost lakefront property because we only live about a mile and a half from it. So we were pretty excited about that. But over the years, things went south. When did you start questioning what was going on down there? Some of the local hunters were seeing stuff coming out of the hillsides, and they said, gee, it looks sort of bluish and foamy like the stuff that's inside the impoundment. Environmental Protection went down there and investigated, and they found that, yes, the stuff was leaking out through the hillsides. There are over a hundred seeps at Little Blue, and closing the pond won't solve this. That's because closing the pond really means covering it and throwing some soil on top. So all that coal ash will still be there with the same problems underneath. To us, it's just going to aggravate the problem. We think it's going to create more hydraulic pressure on what's going out into these old mine shafts or these, you know, cracks in the hillsides. And I believe it's like trying to put cookie dough in a, in a spaghetti strainer and then you stick a brick on top of the cookie dough, it's gonna push it out through the holes, through any holes it can find. So even though it's covered up, it might be gone from your view, but, but what's underneath it is still going to be there. So the largest coal ash impoundment in the United States is not really being closed, it's just being covered with soil. That's right. It'll never be, um, the problem will never go away because they're always going to have to watch and see how far it's going, how far it's traveling underground. There's a certain finality to saying that Little Blue Run is going to be closed, but how far reaching is the issue? I don't think anyone really knows. It's going to take, I believe, 15 years to get the closure completed. And I think, you know, it's going to be somebody's concern for a long time. If the people that make the regulations would just come out and walk a mile in our shoes and see what we're dealing with and understand that they wouldn't want it in their backyard. Sure, you have to dispose of the coal ash somewhere, but let's do it right. Whether or not there's actually a safe way to deal with coal ash remains to be seen. The coal ash elements are going to outlast the pond. And so we have a, a toxic legacy issue here that's going to be with us until we can figure out how to box this stuff up and keep it out of contact with the environment. A Pennsylvania company called Ebensburg Power says they've found a solution. 
In the midst of trying to deal with the coal refuse piles littering the state, they discovered they could burn it, generating cheap electricity and producing what they claim is a safe coal ash. So everything around us, these are all coal refuse piles. Right, this is all coal refuse. What do you guys do with all of this? Well, what we do is we, we process it and we take the finer material and use it as fuel to make electricity at our power plant. At the power plant, we mix limestone in with it. Now, the reason why we do that is that coal ash is uh, alkaline material. It's got a high pH material. This reject material has sulfur compounds that make low pH material. So we neutralize that sulfur and encapsulate that material so that it does not leachate out, if you will, and cause potential water problems. What this means is, when coal ash is mixed with limestone and burnt, a chemical reaction occurs that effectively sucks all the sulfur out of the coal ash, making it a stable solid that won't leach heavy metals into the ground. The end product is trucked from the plant to reclamation sites and is used to fill old mines. We're on about 60 acres of land, and when, what we've done here, we've removed about 1 million, 1 million, 200,000 tons of coal refuse, and we'll bring back about the same amount of coal ash to reclaim the site. Everything around here, then, is coal ash? Yes, we're standing on coal ash. This was just brought from the power plant here, what, 20 minutes ago. Uh, we're standing on it. You see a little steam. That's from the mm -hmm. moisture coming off. Is it safe to have it just kind of hanging around out here, out in the open? Uh, yes, it is. Yes, it is. And how much of this stuff do you bring around every day? Every day, we probably generate about uh, 1,200 tons of uh, coal ash a day. We're taking that and eliminating the burning by removing the coal refuse and using it as, as fuel for electricity. And we're remediating the water runoff. So we're solving air pollution problems, water pollution problems, returning the scars of the land to, uh, to usable land, and kind of rejuvenating the communities. So it's, it's really a win-win. It's, it's, it's just a great story. While companies like Evansburg are optimistic, the fact is it's too early to tell if this is a win-win. Even though they'll monitor these sites for the next two decades, there isn't enough data to guarantee that solutions like this aren't just a temporary fix. It's crazy to think that they're just bringing trucks and trucks of coal ash up here, throwing some grass on top of it, and calling it a day. And what's even more absurd is that this is the most high-tech solution that we have. This problem is not going away. This problem is not going anywhere. The materials that are toxic are elements. They are going to stay with us. They may stay where they are for 20 years. They may stay where they are for 50 years. They may stay where they are for 100 years. But then what? It's not just a problem for us. It's a problem for our children and our children's children. Really, the best solution to coal ash is to stop burning coal. Our dependence on coal in everyday life means we will continue to burn it. Even if we were to stop burning coal today, we would still be stuck with the millions of tons of coal ash we've already created. Energy companies are being allowed to police themselves with little oversight from the federal government, which means coal ash ponds across the country will continue to leak dangerous pollutants into the water, and another disastrous spill is almost inevitable. Unless we come up with a permanent solution for a substance that will stay toxic essentially forever, these deadly materials will continue to threaten the environment and our health.